Hey guys, what's up? Bisector Tron here from One Hive Gazette. Uh, here with the recap video, finally, uh, for the arranged war we just had. And um, it was against Dark Looters, and they uh, brought a very nice war and got the win. Uh, obviously, all the nines and eights were three starred, and yes, there were eights. I was wrong about there not being eights. Uh, we had quite a few Town Hall eights, and we'll see attacks in some later videos, because I'm going to split up the attacks into Town Hall. Uh, 11, Town Hall 10, Town Hall 9, and Town Hall 8 videos. Um, those are actually all going to be later videos. In this one, I'm showing their attacks that got the win for them. Uh, so you can see here, the difference was they got uh, two Town Hall 10 3 stars. Or three of them, but two, uh, two more than us. We only got number 7 taken out, uh, whereas they got number 7 plus 6 and 4. So we're going to take a look at 6 and 4 and uh, show how it was the difference um, and how it got them the win. Sorry about that. But um, both these Town Hall 11s were only one star. So uh, you might think in a war like this that Town Hall 8s and 9s don't matter, but they actually do. Uh, they matter quite a bit because the quicker they can uh, clean up the bottom area, uh, the more scout attacks for the Town Hall 10s, uh, the more two stars you can get on the Town Hall 10s with Town Hall 9 attacks. makes it easier to do the three star attempts and also frees up attacks to try to two star these guys uh, because we did not have a whole lot of... Uh, scout attacks and neither did they in the last like hour they were getting our last few nines three stars so uh, both sides were scrambling for town hall uh to finish off all the town hall nines actually so the town hall tens didn't even have a whole lot of tries to get three stars i think one of their town hall tens even had to dip on dirt if i remember correctly uh maybe not i can't remember exactly now uh yeah there's seven had to dip down and get gilgamesh so they even had to drop a Town Hall 10. But anyway, um, they got the job done, so hats off to them for that, uh, pulling off the clutch uh, three stars on these Town Hall 10s. Um, this is, a, I know, a little bit of a bully attack, but I, I think it's interesting to show just because uh, Town Hall 11s can somewhat consistently get three stars against Town Hall 10s if it's executed correctly. And I think this is a very good example of a great execution on the attack. Um, so we're looking at uh, Kecko, or Seko, uh, coming in with a queen walk and then has the um, has the mass witch attack that you see so often at Town Hall 11 with these uh, level 3 witches and the Grand Warden. Very, very powerful stuff. The Eternal Tomb uh, lets those witches be immortal for a while and lets their skeletons be immortal. So very, very powerful stuff. Uh, you can see that uh, Seko's coming in here, does the queen walk. Just to prevent his witches from being flanked, really doesn't want that um, top area to basically flank his witches. So takes it out. Very smart there. Comes in with all these witches, the Grand Warden, everything following up. A few of his witches do, do go on kind of a walk at the bottom here. So I thought this might not be the uh, a three star, but the Grand Warden, if you guys didn't know, can hop walls. So he's he's a little bit of a hog rider in that sense, and uh, he's basically just gonna stay right in between both groups of troops and uh, pop, top, pops the Eternal Tomb and uh, lets those witches live in the middle and on the outside. Everything's been cleared out in the core, basically. The queen's been doing a nice job. We still has one of her healers on her, so that helps a little bit. Uh, but she's going to go down in just a moment, and it's just up to the warden and some barbarians and the witches. Uh, but just has too much left up, and that warden has such great range that he could just snipe that mortar uh, from so far away. It's actually pretty crazy, his range. So these troops basically keep making their way around, um, and these witches are going to basically have their skeletons beat through the wall here, get to these last few defenses. The only real threat is the wizard tower at this point, um, just because it's the only splash damage left on this base, and there's just too many skeletons for it to even deal with. Uh, plus the wardens backing everything up and giving them a little bit of extra life. Comes in with these minions here, which is a bit of a nice touch, although they do go down, so uh, it doesn't quite get much value for them. But anyway... Uh, that Wizard Tower is going to go down in just a moment as soon as the Expo uh, gets busted up. And here it goes. Boom, Wizard Tower goes down, and that's going to be a three-star. Now, a few of his witches do die to that Wizard Tower. Giant Bomb goes off, but it misses the witches and uh, has just enough juice to get around and get the three-star. So, a uh, nice attack to them. Uh, I don't think our Town Hall 11s were able to pull off any three-stars, so it was our Town Hall 10 that got the sole three-star on the opposing Town Hall 10. But um, anyway, if, you know... This could be a very uh, big part of the game if Town Hall tens go up and three star the Town Hall or go up and two star the Town Hall elevens, and then these Town Hall elevens can dip down and uh, three star the Town Hall tens. Uh, so very nice attack. All right, we're gonna take a look at a true Town Hall ten three star. 
uh, Ista taking on Predator and doing it very nicely here. Dropping down some minions. Uh, basically, the idea there is just to create a funnel for the queen walk. And then also a few up top. We'll see the importance of that in just a moment. Uh, but the queen's heading up north as planned. Uh, she's taking out defenses. Drop some wall breakers. Basically, the goal for that is to let the queen get into that first air defense. So um, she'll make her way up. Dropping an archer just to uh, get some damage going on that elixir uh, pump, I guess. But the main thing here is drops the rage. Uh, to help the queen against the two-point defense plus the sweeper that's been pushing those healers back. Uh, very convenient that the town hall's not in range, so the queen's not going to get stuck on that. She's going to keep walking. And in just a moment, um, she's going to step up here. Um, as soon as this uh, builder hut goes down, and then she's going to take the jump spell along with the golems. So, um, oops, sorry, I was thinking this is an air attack. This is a ground attack. Sorry, guys. Uh, mainly it's a mass golem with a few hogs and a few... Uh, loon, so a few de defense targeting troops, but mainly just trying to overpower this base. Only has level two infernos, uh, so drops down the poison on the CC troops. All those golems are soaking up the streams of the inferno, so no big deal there. I like the few hogs right there. They're going to make their way in, uh, take out a few defenses while all, everything's distracted. Uh, drops a few more giants down. Queen sitting back doing work, and then uh, you can see the golems are moving into that next inferno tower. It's going to go down pretty quickly. The hit points also makes a big difference on the Inferno. It's not nearly as tough at level 2 as it is at level 3. So it goes down a little bit quicker than it normally would, especially with those raged up golems. They, they do, you know, a, a significant amount of damage, I guess, for a defensive targeting uh, tank like that. They uh, they do, I think, under rage like 70 or 80 DPS, so pretty solid there. Uh, Queen's on the Town Hall, but still has her ability. King's on a wall right now, but these balloons got huge, huge value. Uh, they're taking out multiple point defense. There's really only one air defense left, and it's on the other side of the base. So although they're getting pushed back by that sweeper, they're going to make their way over because everything's on the king and the golems. Uh, so it gets very good value for just the three balloons he brought. Uh, the queen's about to go down in just a moment. Uh, there, boom, she goes down. So just has the king and a few wizards. Uh, but those balloons, like I said, making their way through, about to uh, get in there and take out the uh, wizard tower, and then uh, has a few wizards backing up the king. I'm going to fast forward times two, has one more wizard in the back, which he drops right there, getting right down to it, but is able to uh, have the king bust through there and get that last compartment cleared out uh, as these wizards take out the mortar. So very nice attack. It was something refreshing to see something that wasn't a Gola Loon uh, with a queen walk or something like that, because that seems like we always see, but um, against, you know, these not quite maxed out Town Hall 10s, the ground attacks are very possible, and they often get the job done like they did here. So... Good attack. Uh, obviously had permission from these two guys to show their bases. Um, so hats off to them for being noble, letting their bases go out there. Because uh, these were very nice attacks, and it's awesome that I get to show them. So anyway, great War of Dark Looters. I'm going to have Town Hall 11s, Town Hall 10s, Town Hall 9s, Town Hall 8s in separate videos as if, if everything goes to planned, uh, which it should. So stay tuned for that. Hope you enjoyed this quick one, though. I couldn't show any of their bases quite yet, so wanted to show... A few of ours getting three-starred because these did make the difference and they should continue to make the difference in these high-level wars. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys later. Bisect the Tron out.